Hello everyone, welcome back to the third episode of the new Obsidian plugin series. In this series, we talk about some of the best additions to the Obsidian Comte plugin library. And special thanks to those who are supporting me on Patreon, your help really means a lot. Without doing any delay, let's dive straight into the video and talk about some of the plugins that you might want to add to your own workflow or your own vault. The first plugin that we are talking about today is Vault Size History. Vault Size History is a plugin that enables you to visualize the historical growth of your vault by displaying a graph that tracks the number of files over time. It does not serve any other purpose other than showing you the graphical representation of the growth of your vault. Once you install the plugin and enable it, you have a ribbon icon added over here and you can click on it to visualize the growth of your vault. This is the growth chart of my vault and I did not keep other files except markdown files. There are very few extra files other than the markdown node files. So you can see the other files are almost non-existent. This is the growth of my vault and you can see it is showing me the data back from 2022. There were 66 markdown files here and I guess this vault was copied from some other place or downloaded so it is only showing data from 2022 but the first time I started using Obsidian or this vault was back in 2021. So this is a simple plugin to visualize the growth of your vault. The next plugin on our list is Dashboard Navigator. This is a plugin that helps you manage and quickly navigate your Obsidian vault. It gives you an instant overview of key vault stats, categorized recent files, total number of files per category, and advanced search features that can help you to easily locate your vault files using the navigator. Once you install and enable the plugin, a ribbon menu will be added over here. You can open the dashboard navigator by using this ribbon menu or you can also uh, use command and search for dashboard navigator and you have this uh, command to open the dashboard navigator and it will open up like this. So first here it will show the key vault stats and it will show the category of uh, file types that are stored in your vault then here recent files recent notes recent canvas recent pdfs and recent other files over here and i think it's very convenient to see all of our files like this categorized in this nice overview section it also has a navigation feature which allows you to search and find notes in your vault directly from here you can choose different layout and you can search for a particular note from here just like this. Currently I'm using this beauty tab plugin as a new tab which shows the recent files over here and the bookmark files. But this plugin dashboard navigator would be a perfect plugin for a new tab replacement where you can easily see all of these files categorized by their type. The next plugin on our list is iron vault. Iron vault is a plugin for TTRPG lovers. It turns obsidian into a full-fledged virtual tabletop for a star forced family of games. I'm not into TTRPG thing, but if you are into TTRPG, then you would love this plugin. Uh, the number of downloads that this plugin has in a short amount of time also speaks volume about its usefulness. So if you are into TTRPG thing, then you can check out this plugin, Iron Vault. The next plugin on our list is Carrot. Carrot is an AI workbench, canvas, chat, and more LLM powered features. It brings the power of LLMs into your Obsidian Vault. What this plugin does is it provides chat interface similar to ChatGPT, Cloud, etc. And it also allows you to use the AI features in the canvas. So I will show you an example. It currently works with all popular LLM providers such as OpenAI, Anthropic, Grok, OpenRouter and even the local models. So once you have installed the plugin, you need to go to options. And here you will need to provide API keys for whatever service you are using. If you don't want to use the online services, then you can also choose OLLAMA if you have already installed it. But I'll choose Grok over here because I have API key for Grok. So I'll just add the API key for Grok over here. Okay, now done. Once you add the API key, here's the chat icon for carrot ribbon menu in the ribbon menu. So you'll need to click on it and it will open this uh, chat interface. If you go to settings of the Carrot plugin, you also have this chat tab where you can configure where you want to store this chat folder. So um, this folder is Carrot and chat subfolder over here. And there is also an option to rename the chat by using the default provider. Here we are into the chat interface provided by the Carrot plugin and we are using Grok as an API provider. You can ask it any question and it will respond. Okay, so it says API key not configured for Grok. Maybe we need to restart our Obsidian app. So I'll choose 
reload and let's try to ask a question what are llms and now it's calling grok and the response is over here one thing i loved about this plugin is that it allows you to convert the chat response into another node uh, i'll show you you can just uh, check the option to ball convert okay i'll just ask another question why are they useful so that i can show you the ball convert feature so i'll just select these two responses and i'll convert this into a note and you can see it is converting two messages and i'll just write llms useful net and here you can also add a custom prompt in order to uh, create a new net and the note is now created if you go here and you can see here the node is created called llm usefulness and it has created a node markdown based node based on the chat responses so that is really useful another way that you can use this plugin is by using it in the canvas interface so i'll just create a new canvas over here let's add a new card over here and i'll just write again i'll ask it about llms okay so then these are some options that are available that are made available by the carrot plugin you can click on any of these and uh, get responses this is the question and this is the response given by the ai similarly uh, there are other tools as well where you can create a user message which will act like your message and then sparkle will give answers and these there are other options such as setting a system prompt setting a role as assistant uh, recreating that answer running the sparkle twice and many others so this is a really good use case of ai in obsidian i'll just delete this file the next plugin on our list is unofficial fabric integration and this is something that i discovered when i was uh, looking into these new plugins and i was very fascinated by fabric fabric is similar to other ai tools which integrates with the llm providers but it has few differentiating factors and i have not looked into depth about this plugin but if you are already using fabric then you might want to check out this plugin because it integrates fabric directly within obsidian if i find fabric interesting i might make a video in future about how you can use fabric along with obsidian the next plugin on our list is light gallery light gallery allows you to create carousel galleries to better organize or view your notes to use this plugin you will need to create a code block with this format light gallery and then you can add the images over here and they will be displayed like this let me show you an example there are no configuration options for this plugin so i'll create a new note i don't have any images in my fold but if you store images uh, you might want to check this plugin i'll just add these images over here and currently it has some <laughs> images you can also write let's say add the image folder as images now create a code block with l-i-t-e-g-a-l if you go to preview mode it's showing nothing let's add images over here okay so i'll just add the images you can add it like this or you can also uh, use other formats which were shown in the plugins option you can add images either by linking to it or uh, just naming it or you can add it by giving the complete path of the image these are the four images that i add over here and if i go to preview mode now it will look like this it gives you a nice carousel view of your images uh, like this so if you are using a lot of images and you want to get a better view of the images then this might be the plugin that you might want to use the next plugin on our list is called as vertical tabs vertical tabs offer an alternative view to display open tabs vertically it allows you to group and organize tabs for better navigation experience if you work with multiple tabs at a single time then the tab view will be cluttered like this and it is very difficult to navigate to the uh, tab that you want because you can't see what the tab is so the vertical tabs plugin gives an alternative view that looks like this it will display all of the open tabs in this vertical view that looks like a file explorer and it is easy to navigate to those tabs uh, you have the option to configure a hotkey for this uh, vertical tabs plugin or you can also directly open it by this icon okay so uh, let me open uh, multiple nodes over here and currently you can see even if i open multiple nodes it's only showing one tab over here because we have installed the vertical tabs plugin okay great 
Now, there is only one tab over here because we have enabled the vertical tabs plugin. I will need to go to the vertical tabs pane and you can do so by hotkey or directly clicking on the icon. These are the vertical tabs that are available over here. You can also view all of these tabs over here by clicking on this icon which will show all the active tabs like this. And then there is this option to sort all of these tabs. You can sort by title name both ascending and descending then sort by pin tabs. You can also create multiple groups right currently we have two groups. Now you can move these nodes from one group to another group just by dragging and dropping. So this is a very good plugin that you might want to add to your workflow if you are working with multiple tabs at the same time in Obsidian. The next plugin on our list is Relay. Relay is another great plugin you might want to add to your workflow if you work in teams or if you want to share your world with others. It allows you to collaborate with others in real time with live courses and you can also share folders with others. You can see some of the features are collaborate in, collaborate in real time, edit offline and share folders. Okay, it's still showing update. I don't know why. Let me go to the settings of the Relay plugin. Enable. Go to options. Now, first you will need to sign up for the Relay account. If you want to work for others' files, then you will need to uh, add the share key that you receive. If you want to share your notes or folders with others, you will need to create a new Relay. And let's write notes over here. Then you will need to add the share folders. What are the folders that you want to share? Let me just create a MOC folder over here and this is my ID name. This is the sharing key that you need to copy and you will need to share this sharing key with the other person. Once your objective is fulfilled with sharing and collaboration, you can also destroy this relay so that the other person does not have access to uh, those files and folders. So I'll just switch to another world, okay? So I think this is the vault. Now I'll need to go to settings go to relay need to log in over here so i'll just log in uh, with one of my accounts once the login is completed close this browser tab and here you will need to add the share key that we just copied previously click on join relay and now you can see here it is showing the shared folder that is the moc folder and it has two creators first is my another id and this is the current id now the MOC will be synced over here. I'll need to click on add to vault. Then it will be added to my vault. Okay. So now we have this relay vault over here, which is synced with uh, another vault. Everything uh, in this vault will be synced with that vault. And you can see these icons over here. Now, these are all the nodes that are present in this folder. Okay. These are the five nodes. I'll just close these tabs. Let me bring them side by side. Now these are the files, okay? So I'll just choose one of those nodes. Uh, okay, so this is the reading list node and this is also reading list node. Now any changes that I make to these vaults will be synced over here. Let's say I write something. This is live collaboration in Obsidian. You can see all of the changes are synced directly to the next vault. So this is a really cool way to use Obsidian if you want to share folders or files to other people and you want their help in some sort of things. The final plugin on our list today is PopKit. If you are on Mac, then you might be familiar with the popular plugin PopClip. This plugin PopKit for Obsidian is similar to PopClip for Mac. It provides you tools to enhance your note taking and productivity workflows. Once you install the plugin, you will see a bunch of options. Enable this plugin and click on options. And here are some things that you want to configure. With this plugin, whenever I select a text, toolbar will appear that will help you do various actions easily. So I'll just select a text from here. These are the actions that are available currently. So you can add attachment, you can convert this to a block code, just like this. These are the accents that are available, such as bold, italics, clear formatting, italics, strike through, and this is the option to find in the current node. Then there is find and replace toolbar. Then there is search in all files. So these are 
the options that are available by default. If you don't want these options, then you can remove these like this and add the options that you want to use. One of the good toolbar action can be search with Google. So you will need to drag it over here. Then uh, there is another option which is translate. You can drag it here. One thing that I noticed is that if you select the option and drag it on this icon, it will not be dragged, but you will need to drag it over this custom icon section. You can see here. Now it's added. One thing that I loved about this is the uh, dynamic calculator. So I'll add it over here. This is the dynamic calculator. Uh, you can just select math operations and it will uh, provide you answer even with complexities. So this is a simple plus and multiplication. And if you select the whole text, it will give you the answer over here, 22. If you click on this, uh, it will open the Google source. If you click on the translate, it will open the Google translator. Another toolbar action that you might want to use is word count. I think this is the word count. And this is the line count, okay. So you'll need to add the word count. And once you select words or text from your notes, Okay, it is disappearing over the background. Let me select here. Now you can see the word count is 15. These are the default built-in action. You can also add other custom actions from here by configuring the source plugin, command, then adding the icon. And once you add the custom icon, it will be available over here and you'll just need to drag and drop it over here. So this is another really cool plugin that you might want to use in your workflow. These are the plugins that stood out to me and I think uh, you should also know about some of these plugins. That's all for this video. I hope you found some of the plugins helpful and you might want to use some of these plugins in your own workflow. If you are watching this video till now, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel and press the like button. If you want to support me for creating more content like this, then you can support me on Patreon by the link in the description. Thank you for watching. You have a great time. See you again.